SKP format and 3D warehouse was the choice for us because we hear from architects and designers all the time. It's like, you know, by the time I get to the fifth floor, like I'm just sitting and waiting and it's, it's super <laughs> laggy. So um, nobody likes a laggy design. All right. Hello and welcome to SketchUp Talk, the internet's favorite SketchUp podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Dietzen. With me as always is Matt Robison. Hello. Happy to be here and happy to talk SketchUp again. And in our producer booth, aka her own place, is Aubrey, our producer. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, so we are here uh, recording live in front of our virtual studio audience. So we're going to have an opportunity to get questions from them for our guests. And who's our guest today, Matt? Oh, it's uh, one of a kind. Uh, we, he's got some great work. And I'm going to tease it out a little bit before I say his actual name. Nice. But, yeah, that's um, good. yeah. So, uh, you know, I, for one, love 3D Warehouse. And I feel like I'm maybe you have more of the modeling from scratch uh, experience, but not all of us uh, have those skills, of course. So I love going on 3D Warehouse and especially the like, you know, approved like product models that are like fully specified to be exact, like real world models um, or to represent like real world products. Those are awesome. And uh, the GE appliances ones that, that are on there are top notch. Um, our guest today is part of the reason that why they're so top notch. Um, so yeah, I'm super he's excited. A, he's a top uh, notcher. He is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's absolutely sure. right. That's his uh, well, subtitle of his job title, probably. That's right. So I mean, as we tease, I just want to throw out because because you know, 3D Warehouse has you know it's it's has it had its ups and downs in the past, and and I gotta say that uh, I think it's on an upswing right now. I mean it's. It is definitely, there's still some Wild West sections where, you know, don't go after dark. Um, but <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, people post their own stuff and sometimes you get people just, you know, taking the scale figure and drawing a smiley face on them and uploading that as their model. So there, that stuff uh, is still happening. But what the 3D Warehouse team is doing a good job at is actually making the the, the search tools better and encouraging the content providers, so the building, the, the actual, the people who make the products, the product creators, encouraging them to get their models up. And that's that's kind of the one of the big things we get to talk about today. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And yeah, I mean, I feel like any user-generated site, there's gonna be a lot of not good stuff. <laughs> but yeah, when you get the, the, or the right gems, you know, or not even the gems, yeah. there's a lot of them. They're not like rare. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you kind of got to, Make sure you have your filter set to kind of cancel out that noise and really right, get the right. signal to the top. But, um, but yeah, more and more good stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like that's probably that's it, it's probably time to to cut to the chase. So, which which I think is Mike's Mike's nickname is the Chase. So <laughs> bring 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 Mike the Chase Brown from GE Appliance up on stage. <laughs> all right. Let's see it. Let's see if he likes that nickname that you gave him. <laughs> hey. hey. Hey, Mike. Hey, that was quite the buildup. I'm uh, excited yeah. to disappoint everyone. Uh, <laughs> All right. I've been called worse, so uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Nice. Yeah, awesome. welcome to SketchUp Talk. <clears throat> well, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm pumped to be here. We've been uh, a journey the last couple of months getting our models, you know, uh, built out and up on the site. So it's... Uh, it's a great time to come in and talk about them. Awesome. Well, why, why don't we, uh, we built, we built you up without ever actually saying what it is you do. So <laughs> we try to leave that for the guests because I think you know what you do better than probably anybody else. So let's, let's, let's hear your introduction of you real quick. Okay. Well, I do as little as possible. Um, but my, uh, my main core job is I in do good uh, company. business. Yeah, I do business to business marketing uh, for GE. So um, I try and find opportunities for us to work more closely with architects and designers, builders. I really work on the construction side of our business. And so that could be with somebody that does uh, multifamily projects, big construction job, you know, jobs, or just those smaller single jobs. So 
it's really my job to make us as easy to do business with as possible. And so that's kind of the core of what I do. Um, and then we also do, you know, lead generation for the business. Um, we do some customer support. So I'm really here just to kind of grease the wheels and make sure when you're doing business with GE, it's as easy as possible. It's easy to find our, um, our SKP files. It's easy to navigate our websites and uh, overall, you know, make it easier to put our products into designs. That's that was very comprehensive. That's that's a lot of stuff. So I don't know how you do as little as possible with that many things on your plate. So that's that's something. That's a lot of words, <laughs> a lot of action. <laughs> so uh, we got to, I, I met you back um, bef just before uh, KBiz 2020. Oh, we should probably just acknowledge that that was that there were some ups and downs to KBiz 2020. But one of the big ups was uh, we got to work with you guys and see some of your awesome content get created and post on 3D Warehouse. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, KBiz was, uh, it was a show to remember or to forget. Um, I think as a lot of people know it, it, you know, from the, their platform, it just didn't, it didn't run, it didn't take off, um, you know, but we pivoted um, and we had a lot of great content already prepared offline. So we were able to use that. Um, so the thing I liked the most is, you know, we created a ton of really cutting edge kitchens. These were kitchens that are forward looking, you know, multiple years ahead on what you expect from design. Um, and so we were able to actually take those kitchens and we were able to render all of those um, in SketchUp with our 3D warehouse models. And uh, we had Josh Riley uh, and, and the Goose um, there to help us out and um, really just kind of showed easy ways to integrate appliances, how to play with lighting, how to play with layouts um, and really size them in so that they fit well. And I think that's one of the things that everybody, you know, centering appliances, making sure the opening's correct. Um, and that you create that dramatic lighting his was were huge benefits. And then, you know, we had a lot of fun too. You know, we incorporated dogs into designs, which I always think is a cool thing to do within uh, SketchUp and 3D Warehouse. Grab a dog, throw it in there, make it seem a little bit more like somebody's house and play around furniture design and layout. Um, but that, it solves such a big problem for us because you never want to get to the point where you've actually done your design and a client walks and they go, oh, that's not what I thought it was going to look like. And that's never the conversation you want to have. So, we had a lot of talks around, you know, doing that initial plan early on and making sure that they're going to, what they see is what they're going to get. And there's no, Hmm, how about that? Or, you know, head scratching or rip it all out. I mean, that's, that's rare, but you know, those, those things happen. So it really takes the remorse out of the, the appliance decision process. Yeah. Getting it as close to what the final product is going to look like or the final uh, space is going to look like is extremely important, of course. And I want to go back a little bit because you mentioned uh, like sort of cutting edge or like futuristic um, appliances. And, you know, I saw some like I think it was like hype videos or something like that. Some I was like, oh, this is like a um, like a you know concept car, like some futuristic potential, mm -hmm. you know, science fiction idea of what like Wi-Fi controlled appliances or whatever. But then it's like, oh, this is a thing I could just buy today. Yeah. I'm like mind blown by the level of technology that's in some of these appliances. I mean, like, can you share some examples of crazy integrations and stuff that, you know, GE appliances are putting in there that are um, cutting edge as far as technology wise? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they're more than just, you know, making things hot and cold and, and wash them anymore. So there's a lot more to them. So one of the products that we really like to highlight was called the Hub. And it's actually, um, it's a, it's an LCD screen that's built into a, a microwave, you know, over the range. And it's a giant touch screen. And so, you know, you think about you walk into your kitchen today and you say hello to your microwave. You know, you're, you know it's, it's going to be a pretty one-way conversation. So this one's <laughs> it's actually voice enabled. Um, so you can do guided cooking. You can actually have recipes pop up. Um, it has a camera underneath it. So you can actually like, you know, if you're cooking, you're not really sure what you're doing or, if, you know, something's done enough. You can call somebody on the phone. They can check out your progress, give you some tips and pointers um, that shouldn't be on fire. You know, something simple as that or, you know, I'd ground that a little bit more. Um, but then it's like, you know, when you're sitting there around dinner, you know, you can watch the news, you can watch Netflix. Uh, you can play chess. You know, if, you, if you're, if you you know, partner, significant other, best friends across the country, you want to do dinner together. You can really in the time of COVID, even if they're just across town. Um, you're able to get together. And then it, it, it aligns with a lot of other things like the ring doorbell. So maybe you didn't feel like cooking last night and you just want to 
the ring doorbell picks up on your your touch screen and you see the person outside pizza delivery guy or what have you um, has that functionality. It's got um, Amazon Alexa enabled. Um, and it's also connected to Sonos because I love to I love to listen to music when I cook. Um, it really you can't hear the cursing as much, so it just kind of drowns it out, makes it a little bit more of a of a nice ambience within the kitchen. So you take all of those things and it kind of just it, it truly is a hub. It's a place where we spend so much time in our kitchen to have one product in there that's connected to everything that you can download all your apps on. Uh, you can receive phone calls on it. Um, again, take videos, really whatever you want to do. And it's, it's crazy because it's kind of an open source thing. So we see people doing things with it, right? Hey, I never would have thought about that before. So um, it's one of those things also with our appliances is they keep getting better over time. So you might buy one in 2020 and we'll continue to add features to it. So it's like our, Connected wall ovens, you know, you you put one of those in your design, you, you sell it into a, the consumer, and then a year later, if they bought one of our wall ovens, we just added air fry. So now you can take that big air fryer off your counter, you can get rid of it, and you can just use your oven. So that's the cool thing about connected appliances is they keep getting better, you know, on the off chance anything was to go wrong with them, they'll alert you, you know, ahead of time. Um, so it's just really, a, it's a cool feature, it's a cool functionality, it makes, it makes the kitchen a lot more fun, especially if you're a bad cook. I mean, the guided cooking, um, you know, even our, even our cooktop will talk to the pots and pans on top and actually turn the temperature up and down. If you're cooking something too high, you're going to wow. switch it or you're going to do like a, a low heat for a cream sauce. So, um, you know, a lot of times we design beautiful kitchens for people that cook horrible meals. So this is one opportunity to say, Hey, this can actually make you a better cook. And it's not, you know, it's uh, it's kind of like the carpenter's as good as his tools, and so these are these really are tools for for the home. That's awesome. So, so one question: I mean, you talked about a lot of capabilities, what it can do. Can you still heat up food in it too? Is that still an option? We're working on that. No, okay. no, we, we, we still we still have that. So, um, yeah, we still brought the uh, the wood stove out of the home a hundred years ago. So we, we've got that going for us. It's it's like it reminds me of uh, you know they're saying that. It, very quickly here, it's not going to be fair to to call these things that we keep in our pockets phones anymore because that's like like seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth functionality down on what right. people actually use it for. Um, which is, but that's awesome. Like, I because I, I was just as you were talking, I was envisioning my kitchen downstairs, and I'm like, yeah, the the microwave's right in the middle of the wall you look at when you look into the kitchen. Like it's right mm -hmm. there. It's right in the middle because I've seen. You know, you guys have smart fridges where you have displays on there, and that that makes sense. But that microwave makes so much more sense. Like I, I, I had never thought. I didn't know you got, you even ha had that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You know, we've even put. You know, now we have an oven in our cameras, so you know, a lot of times it's hard to see through the window because they're tinted, they're dark. It's hard to see how done something is. And if you open the door, you know, you can let the heat out. So we've got a camera inside. So if you, you know. It's kind of nice at my house, you know, where it can be outside and the mm -hmm. cooking can be going on and we can hang out with friends or hang out with the kids and then just get notifications on my phone, you know, hey, the dryer's done, the washer's ready, the oven's preheated, and so on and so forth. So there's a big convenience factor to it. So it's kind of part of the thing with design is, um, you know, if you want to start somebody off with like a base level appliances, but hey, if you know, if you want to step up and you want to be able to do this, this, and this. It's a cool part of the story. And that's why we like um, the 3D warehouse because it actually links out to our website. So you can pick one of those models, but actually link to our website and you can like play the videos, check out the features and be like, oh, that's cool. Or, you know, to be honest, sometimes people are like, I don't really want that much connected stuff in my house. And you might say, yeah, maybe I don't want that. But, you know, the options there. And um, I think that's the that's the cool uh, that's the cool part of it. Well, and that's, that's the thing with GE, right? Is you guys have an array of of options i mean you you have different levels different finishes different i was that was one of the things that got me because i mean ge's kind of been a household name for appliances for years and years and years i had no idea that you guys had such a diverse set of offerings as you actually have yeah yeah so we have um you know on 3d warehouse we have higher which is really kind of our like hip like hip cool kind of a lower Denver lofty style. So it's um, a lot of compact appliances. I saw something in the chat about small appliances. We're totally in on both the small countertop ones, but also um, the smaller footprint ones, because in a lot of places, especially, you know, New York, Denver, Seattle, you've got to have those smaller footprints. And those are really kind of 
hip cool. You know, they've, they've got cool flash designs. Everything on them is a touch screen, just like an iPhone. So you're swiping and tapping. And we've got GE, which is our, um, you know, the brand everybody knows. And then you go up in a GE profile and that's when you start to get the really cool connected stuff we talked about. Um, and then from there, the thing that I, I think the coolest thing on 3D Warehouse is Cafe. Because Cafe has so many different finishes that you can pick. So it's got a glass front. It's got a white mat, black mat. Um, and then all the hardware you can actually flip out when you're in 3D Warehouse. So you can actually like, okay, I want to put my bronze handle on my white mat range. Or I want to put, uh, you know, my rose gold accents, etc. So there's all these different like handles and features. And that's the cool thing about playing around with the design is, and we really had a lot of fun with that at KBiz because we wanted to match up our hardware and our cabinets to the actual, the handles on the refrigerator. Um, and so we were able to play around and that's kind of like the devil's in the detail and designs. Like if you really want to make that thing pop, like having that stuff match, like that's a whole nother, like, you know, kind of humble brag when somebody comes into your house, you know, I've got, the, you know, custom finish, custom handles, etc. cetera. Um, and then we've got, you know, going up to the monogram, which is our, our professional line. So, um, you know, big 48 inch pro ranges, you know, giant refrigerators, you know, wine sommeliers, you name it. Uh, we've got, we've got it all there. So that's the really cool thing is whether or not you're designing, you know, a simple kitchen or a super high end luxury kitchen, we've got you covered. And we've got, you know, from a traditional look to a minimalist, you know, you know, very refined look, um, you can really do it. And the nice thing is, you know, you can, you know, let your client kind of pick and choose what they want. So it's cool. That's awesome. And, and you could have all those things right there in your SketchUp model and they'll be accurate. They'll be perfect. That's a yes. plus. Do you know off the top of your head how many products you guys have in 3D Warehouse? Just ballpark? Oh, well, don't hold me to it, but I I know we have north of a thousand and we have less wow. than 2,000. So somewhere in between that range, um, you know, the thing is we're, um, we're continuing to add new models right now and stand up our catalogs. Um, so it's only going to continue to grow over time. Um, and, you know, really we did a big launch at KBIS. And so there were a lot of models that we showed there that weren't available yet. And so as those models come available, you know, just kind of keep coming back and checking it out. Um, so, so I want you to tell us a little bit about, um, I know you guys have had products for a while, but recently, like for KBIS, there was a big push and you got a bunch of new products out there. Can you tell us a little bit about that pro process? Um, I don't think we've actually talked much about uh, VDC on this show before, um, but maybe you can tell us about your experience with, with that. Yeah, so, um, you know, we really, you know, wanted to come, you know, and show these products off, you know, kind of live at the show, even though the show was virtual, um, and then have the models be available at the same time. So, you know, we worked with our engineering department um, to, you know, basically transfer files over CAD files. Um, and then it was, it was such a cool process because they would use like pictures from our website and color samples and um, our installation instructions um, and really kind of compare all those things together and then really give us kind of like a, a turnkey model. I mean, it was, you know, okay, here's the links. And then, you know, it obviously took a little bit of time, but, you know, within weeks we had, you know, over a thousand models ready to go. Um, and there was a, a, you know, review process where our, you know, engineering team and industrial design team came in and checked things out and um, vetted it out. But I mean, they were so spot on because we had some imagery, we had the engineering files and um, yeah, it was just, it was incredibly simple for us. Um, you know, and now we have the opportunity to put those models on our website. So anybody who, who's coming to our website that wants to, you know, check out the model, the SKP file is going to be there um, along with the CAD file. And so, all those things kind of live in one place. So this is basically gave us another, you know, marketing resource out there and another way to, to be a little bit easier to do, you know, business with, you know, our architect and designer friends. So um, that was great, but I know there was a ton of work in the back end. I know that I basically had to give them my link to our website and hook them up with some engineering files and it was done. I took all the credit for it. Uh, so hopefully nobody from GE is watching this, um, but it was just incredibly simple. So couldn't, could not have been, better and in the end in the end results are on you know 3d warehouse all those models are free to download you look at the picture and you look at the cad drawing and you look at the, the skp file um it really gives you multiple you know kind of layers of of uh, appearances and they're all true it's all one single source of the truth 
So to the point made earlier, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a SketchUp, you know, weekend warrior, you know, working on my workbench design or, you know, finishing the basement. And um, there's been times when I've had to make a representative model to, you know, you know, tell my wife, you know, hey, we could put in a, a bigger wine and beverage center in the basement or here's where the pinball machine goes. And she's like, oh, that looks horrible. And I'm like, well, it's representative, um, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but that's the thing is that these are so true to life because I've been a user uh, for a while now. And it's just nice to know that it's from the source and they use the real files, especially if you're if you're really relying on your rendering, like if you're taking measurements off of that and having cabinets cut off that, that's a, it's a big, that's a big risk. So having something that's true to life and has been vetted out by our engineering team is, is really nice. Like it's a major confidence builder. Yeah, I bet. Well, Absolutely. I can say that, that uh, I, I've, I've, I've got a chance to look at some of those files and, and they are really cool looking. I mean, there's, there's, it's, the, the thing that I was impressed with, what, what blew me away was the balance between detail. So there's there's enough detail in there that it's a good looking thing. You could actually go in and render it if you need to, but they weren't super heavy models. Like they mm-hmm. weren't, like I, I didn't bring in the range and have my computer go, er, you know, stop, we got to show this. It was it, just the right amount of detail so that it looked good by itself without a bunch of materials or anything like that. But it was not, you know, a million faces on on a microwave or something like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, you know, we do a lot of work within, you know, kind of the multifamily industry. So we think about somebody that's doing a a high rise or, you know, designing, you know, multifamily condos, townhouses. It gets really heavy and it gets really, you know, those those files can be big. So that was one of the the reasons why, you know, uh, SKP format and 3D warehouse was the choice for us because, we hear from architects and designers all the time. It's like, you know, by the time I get to the fifth floor, like I'm just sitting and waiting and it's, it's super <laughs> laggy. So um, nobody likes a laggy design. You don't get paid for having a laggy design. It doesn't <laughs> help you get excuses, you know, or make excuses. So um, that was the great thing is to your point, we got the detail in there. If you really scroll up, you know, really tight on something, you might see a, an angle, but you know, from a, a standard doing a rendering for a client, um, it's perfect and everything, the proportions are fantastic. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And especially for, um, well, like I'm building a house right now and that, that accuracy, I feel like that, um, knowing that it's like a vetted true to life, exactly accurate model for, cause even like half an inch being off for your count, like, you know, for your range in your counter is your, it's like a big difference that you notice, you know? So knowing the exact, uh, specifications and like the model is exactly what's going to be in real life is incredibly important. Yeah. And I mean, we're still waiting for your order, Matt. I haven't seen it come through yet, but uh, (laughs) I'm looking forward to serving you. But, you know, that was one of the cool things that Cave is was we put an island in. And that's one of the things that's always kind of a mystery, especially if you have like a a wall oven or an oven where the door is going to open or you have a built in microwave. It's like, you know, the last thing you want is that tight corner where uh, handles hitting a, you know, a knob is hitting a handle or there's not enough room to, to walk around where you're kind of trapped on one side or another. And you get to kind of play around with that, you know, what we call that triangle of, you know, is everything in its right place? Is this going to be functional? If I've got kids at home. Am I creating a, you know, potential safety hazard, you know? And so those are things that like, well, once it's really in there, you go, oh, wait, I didn't even think about that. So um, that's, that's the cool thing about it for sure. Um, so you guys did mention that you have new products coming up now that you're getting into the warehouse and, and thereby onto your site. Is that something, do you have a team that's, that's using SketchUp to create those or using the, uh, the services group again? There's a combination of both. Yeah. So it's, it's really a partnership. So it's our engineering team transferring, uh, files to, um, you know, to, to the triple team. Um, and then from there, um, they're, um, doing all the work and that we've vetted out. So. Um, as models become available, um, and sometimes even before they're available, because if you're building a project that's a year out, we want you to have the newest, coolest stuff. So, um, we really kind of started off with getting everything that was in the current portfolio. And now we're kind of doing that forward looking thing. And that's cool for us as a company too, because I can get, you know, full, you know, rendered models, you know, 3d models, um, early 
And so if I want to go and show those to like one of our clients um, ahead of time, or we want to play around with our own kitchens or do some, you know, design work for our, our, our photo sets, um, we can do all that. So it's a huge time saver and it allows everybody to have a lot of input into the process because it's sometimes it's conceptual. Like you've got a mood board and it's like, Oh, here's, you know, kind of the wood tone and here's this. And you, you have no idea. I mean, you're like, Oh, that stuff looks together when it's nice little squares next to each other. But you know, when we want to, you know, design our kitchens for our, our catalogs or for, you know, a, a TV ad, etc. cetera. Um, you know, sometimes again, that's, it's okay. This looks good, but we haven't really seen it. And so that's a, a big benefit, you know, at least from the manufacturer side, probably not for everybody on the call. Um, but that's the way we look at it is we can go to market faster and better um, because of the partnership. That's awesome. I mean, it's, it's got to, it's got to suck to be in that situation where you're like, well, I know I want to put this product in here or this new product's coming out, but I don't know how big it is. So I can't design around it. Um, so being able to get ahead of it like that's got to be huge. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And that was, you know, at, at KVIS, we had, a, um, you know, Matt had a really cool kind of like hexagonal tile. Um, and if you looked at that, the sample was really big. And you're like, ooh, it's a big piece of tile. But once you got it into the kitchen, you were like, okay, that's actually, that looks pretty dope. I mean, and it was, you know, it was laid out in a really cool, creative way. And that was the thing that we noticed was like, I would have never laid it out tile that way, but because I could do it virtually and it was like, you know, I'm not going to break it. You know, you can just put, we kind of like, the tile was kind of here and there and kind of in a, uh, like almost like a honeycomb pattern. And it was like, that was super cool because I would have never thought to do that. And obviously, if you tell a tile person, oh, I don't want to put tile here, but I want to put it here and here. They're going to go, well, you're nuts. But here's the render. And like, oh, that's really cool. I know it is. Yeah. So that was the the kind of the cool thing about it is you can't you can't break it. You can't goof it up. You can always erase it. You know, so, you know, get weird. That's that's what we're all about. <laughs> oh, I, I think I'd be better at laying tile if I had an undo key because that's it's bad news. There's no under like key in the real no, world. It's, ooh, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's a big thing for, cause you mentioned like from a professional point of view, um, you know, people knowing that something's going to fit, knowing what it's going to look like. So less people complaining about, Oh, well, I didn't know it was going to be this color. I didn't know it was going to be this tall or, <clears throat> uh, having that reference model. But what I want to point out is to, uh, to, to the young people out there, the, maybe maybe the co-hosts are soon to be married. Just how important it is when you are designing something alongside your spouse to be able to show them up front what it looks like. Because it doesn't matter how well you visualize how a room's going to lay out. Uh, you got to get buy-in. And an image is worth several, several discussions after something's already been done. So Taking notes yeah. here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it helps. It's, you know, especially if you have a client that's really opinionated or what we see a lot anymore, somebody that brings like a, a Pinterest board or a house, they've been taking snippets and I like this and I like this and I like this. And it's like, does that all work together? Does that all flow? And keep in mind, you're constrained by, you know, for a remodel or renovation, you're, you're space constrained. And so, you know, there's a lot of times when it becomes a really awkward conversation to where you're the designer and they're the client. You're like, yeah, but you know, kind of went to school for this and, you know, you know, let me tell you about scale and proportions, you know, it's you know, like, no, I, I really want this. And then you get it in there and, you know, hopefully they still love it, you know, but you know, anybody else walking in the space might be like, who designed that kitchen for you? No, oh, it was, you know, Susie. And it's like, oh, I scratched them off the list, you know, so you want to, <laughs> you want to be proud of your work. And, you know, obviously the, the, the customer's always right. But I think it's, it becomes a, a conversation of a, of a fact and opinion or mm -hmm. fact versus opinion. when you've got that real model and you're like, okay, this is the facts. And it takes a little bit of the, the emotion out of it, which is always a way better way to have what I call a, a design negotiation with the client. The, the, the customer is always right, but there's an asterisk next to that. Um, there is. Cause a customer doesn't always know what they want. They, they, they have ideas, but I think a good designer helps, uh, a customer realize that in a way that's practical and that's going to actually work for sure. Cause 
You said, I, I've, I've heard a lot of talk about Pinterest being a double-edged sword where it's like, yeah, it's great because you can look up and see these ideas from all over the world, but you can also grab totally disjointed things that will never in a million years work together and say, yeah, make me a kitchen out of this. And uh, that, can be, that can be rough for a designer. It is. You know, you get the, uh, <laughs> what I, I call the, the, the Pee Wee Playhouse, you know, a throwback to the, <laughs> to the 80s and 90s, you know, where it's just, you know, it's eclectic, like, don't get me wrong. And it all kind of worked together, but that's where, um, you know, that's where it's, it, it gets really tough. And when it's, I like the tile in this picture and I like the hardwood here and this and that mm -hmm. to your point, I mean, you bring all those together and it's the subtle things. And that's where I think too, it's kind of nice to have our finishes on there. We got stainless and black stainless and white and black and matte black and matte white. You take all those finishes and it's like, you've got a lot to consider just in appliances these days, not to mention your countertop and then usability and you, you, you ladder all these things in, you know, design, it's a complicated game. And so anything you can do to, to make it easier is a, uh, is a good thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And um, you know, we've talked a lot about 3d warehouse and SketchUp uh, kind of, greasing those wheels or like reducing the friction for designers to to put uh, ideas in front of clients. But, uh, you know, at the beginning, you mentioned that there's other things that you do. And I was just curious, like what what else, what other kind of stuff do, does GE appliances do to um, make it easier for designers to like communicate their ideas? Yeah. So we do a few things. We have, um, you know, not to plug our websites, but we have cafeappliances.com. We have a lookbook. Um, to where you can actually go to, you know, it's it's like a catalog, a stylized catalog. Um, the thing that we really did this year that in my opinion was the big thing is it's called geahybridevents.com. Um, and that's our, those are our KBIS kitchens. And you can actually go and you can walk through all these kitchen designs virtually, like literally it's a giant Matterport, uh, but it's high res. When you hover over a model, you see a little bit of uh, the um, the features and videos, etc. Um, but you can actually walk walk around in that space um, and tour these kitchens. Um, and so there's four GE Cafe kitchens. Um, there's three profile kitchens. There's two GE kitchens. Um, and then for Monogram, you know, we shot videos um, all across the U.S. We have eight Monogram kitchens done by the top designers in the U.S. from you know, and, you know, Kips Bay, um, you know, in Texas to, uh, you name it, we had a an, Manhattan loft, we did an LA skyline, like Hollywood Hills, like super cool kitchen. Um, and so that to me as a designer to see what kind of the people that are like the upper echelon is, as far as, you know, I'll put quote marks in the air cause it's all opinion, um, what they're doing and how they're laying out their kitchens and what they're building and their materials and choices um is is huge um so you know we love that and you know we've you know just continued to build out our our online database of materials because it's really hard to do designs right now too with covid and you know people don't really want you there so we've really upped our our game with more digital assets more pictures more videos mm -hmm. um just because you've got to do it your job's that much harder now it's 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 tough um and so those are, I, I think would be probably some of the big things, but, you know, having the virtual KBiz site to actually tour that whole entire 28,000 booth of, you know, separate kitchens is, uh, is a game changer. And that's up all year for us. So it's uh, anybody here can go there at any time. Not, not to, not to force us back into SketchUp, but I did want to make sure we had to touch on one thing. Um, cause it was something you were mentioning before about, you know, being able to look at different finishes and that kind of stuff. And one of the things that, that makes that easy is I believe most of the uh, components you guys had make, made were actually dynamic components. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually, um, yeah, I look at some of our cooktops, like a gas cooktop, you know, a lot of times we'll have a, a grill or a griddle in the middle. You can pop those in and out. And with, um, with cafe, you select one range and you can come through and change the finish on it, change the hardware, et cetera. Um, so just having that flexibility. Um, and it was something that, you know, uh, Josh Riley and, and the goose, you know, we worked on at KBiz was we'd already built our kitchen. Um, but it was cool to see like, what if scenarios, like what if we would have went with this finish? And it was actually kind of cool. Cause there was like, 
oh, you know, we really could have went either way. And, um, or would we want to like mix and match finishes? Like Hmm. that's, you know, you're really pushing the envelope there. Um, (laughs) you know, but sometimes, you know, we see that contrast in kitchens where, you know, the Island is a different color, you know, or, you know, maybe, um, you know, maybe there's an element like, uh, in a big kitchen where you have a wine reserve on the other side, um, the ability, and that's kind of what we played around, uh, with them is, you know, what happens if you say, Oh, I would love to have an ice maker here. And it's like, well, why don't we put a wine reserve right here too? And to play and put all those things together and mess around with the different finishes. And then the lighting played such a huge part of it because the kitchens we were in were typically uh, a wall of appliances and they, the light would be coming in towards them. Mm -hmm. How do they look at, how does that finish look at 6 PM versus how does it look at noon? And do you really care? Are you at home at noon? Um, You know, so we had lots of, <clears throat> kind of unique, uh, kind of fun conversations around that. So the dynamic part is really cool. Makes it a lot easier for a designer to, you know, let's flip from black to white and see the difference. It's not a matter of, okay, you got to open this up and then I got to select this and then paint this and then back out and then go to the next one and go in and paint right. the surface, the surface, the surface to right click and just change it. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, all right. So I got, I got to ask you, I, I know you mentioned, you mentioned the hub earlier, but I got to say of, of all the the products that you know of the GE makes, what is your favorite? What's the one that you either have or wish you had? Like what what is the ultimate GE appliance in your opinion? Oh man. We have so I many brands. Like, it's like asking you to pick your favorite child, but I know deep down you have a favorite child. And they're, they're within earshot. That's true. <laughs> they're pretty tuned into Sesame Street right now, so they probably wouldn't hear, but um you know <laughs> We make a new um, Monogram Pro range that is, it is insane. Um, it does a, has a Bluetooth connection. We call it, it's, the technology is called Heston Q. And so the, the pan that you cook on actually has a sensor in it. And it will actually turn the gas up and down depending on what temperature you want to have. Um, it also has this, these great brass accents to it. Um, you can fit full, shi- full size catering trays into the oven. Um, the BTUs on the top are like, they're total pro grade. Like if you want to cook like a pro, if you want 22,000 BTUs of super intense heat and you want to cook on a wok in your house, you can totally do it. I mean, um, the sky is absolutely the limit on that thing. And it's has every, you know, every feature you could possibly want. Uh, plus it's gorgeous. Uh, so just won the architectural design award. Um, and it is, 10 years in the making. Um, wow. So we've worked with every architect and designer uh, that we could talk to. We've had people come in and we built cardboard mock-ups and played around with the knobs. And I mean, everything from how that knob feels in your hand to how it's like, you know, those cool old stereo knobs, like, you know, where you turn you're like, oh, that feels really good. It's got the clicks in it. Like it has all of that stuff built into it in the weight of the door. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it actually does it. You know, we say it a lot, but, you know, a carpenter is as good as their tools. I mean, you're, you know, you're working with a, uh, I, don't, I don't know the, the, the most high end tool out there, but you know, a fest tool or whatever it is, but you're working with the nicest of the nice in that scenario. So um, that would have to be one, but I will throw one more out there. We make a nugget ice maker. So if you want to get like that good crunchy, uh, that Ooh. ice, we make a countertop version of that, that pumps out like 10 pounds of ice. And we actually make and in the wall one that makes like 50 pounds of ice a day. Oh, and wow. so we've been known to be ice junkies at our house and like <laughs> we go down to the Sonic and get like, they'll sell you a bag of it down there. But once you've been in the freezer, it's never quite the same. So there's, I have to pick two just, and I love both my children. So out of fairness, I, I had to throw that in there. What's, what's the name of that, that nugget ice maker? It's called the Opal, um, oh, the Opal okay. nugget ice maker. Um, and it is, if you like cocktails or you like just chewing on ice or, um, it's, it's, it's great for cocktails. It's great for, you know, soft drinks, it's great in a glass of water. So, um, it's, uh, it's a game changer and the kids are, they know where it's at and they, they go crazy for it. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, my wife's a big fan of, of that type of ice. So I just, I figured I'd write that down and, and just keep that in case I ever need it. Okay. Well, yeah, you can combine your, your order with Matt's and, you know, we'll there we see go. if we can get a deal. Yeah. Give us the SketchUp Talk discount. <laughs> Very small. 
Awesome. Well, we we only have one question come in. That means uh, means you're answering all the questions beforehand. Uh, I I don't I think I know the answer to this, but we can throw it out. Um, okay. The question was, and I don't mean to step on your your toes, Robert, but like I said, I, I think this is I think I know this is going to go. He was wondering if the light fixtures for hoods uh, have any any lighting information for rendering programs. As far as I know, that's not the case. Yeah, so we provide um, the wattage um, of those bulbs, but we don't really provide uh, any of those. What I will tell you on on almost all of our hoods, you're at least going to get three settings, kind of a high, medium, low. Um, and then on our upper and like our actual range hood. So like on a microwave, you're going to have like, you know, I'd say, you know, your high intensity light, medium, then the kind of what we call the night light that you can play around with. And then when you go up to our higher end models, you're actually going to have a knob. Um, so you can, you can dial that down, but most of our lighting is led lighting. Uh, and it typically is a little bit more on the, what I'll call the white light. Uh, but you can definitely tone that down to get a little bit more of a, of a yellow into that light. So there's, there's definitely a spectrum, but that's a, that's a great question and something we can take back to the team and see if we can provide those values in our, um, in our use and care manuals, which you could find, on the catalog store from the link from the mods. So awesome. Well, we're, we're at about 45 minutes this is about where we, uh, start to wrap. Um, I, I, thank you so much for, for hanging out. This is this kind of, uh, I like this because we got away from not that, not that when we talk about building design and stuff, it's bad by any means, but this was definitely a unique thing. We don't get to talk about stuff like appliances. We don't like, this was a, a fun opportunity to kind of get outside of our, our mainstream and, and learn. I learned some things. I'm, I will actually, I have the GE site up on my screen right now and I'm probably going to spend the rest of the afternoon uh, perusing. So that's, that's a plus. <laughs> <Good>. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, it, this is last, last, uh, words, anything else you want to throw out there before we uh, wrap up, Mike? Yeah. I mean, you know, my big things are the models are free. They're on 3d warehouse. Um, we're, we're adding more every day. Um, and so, um, we, we love, you know, feedback, um, on our appliances. So, um, if at any time you want to, you know, go to our consumer site, if you've got a question, you can go there. Um, but count on GE being a brand that you can go to reliably and finding our files and making your life easier. Uh, so we really appreciate the partnership. I think this is cool. I think there's a ton of new technology that we're probably going to try and incorporate in the future. Um, so TBD on that, but uh, no, no spoilers, but um, it's only going to get better from here. I like it. Psyched. That's that, that, that little, little bit of a cliffhanger. Like I could tell you everything, but it's good to be good. Yeah. Stay like tuned. It. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mike. Thanks for hanging out with us. And, and, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I think it worked out great because this was all new information for me. I really appreciate it. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. And thank you all for hanging out with us today. Uh, hope you learned something too. Uh, and if you have not seen, if you have not been there, you can just hop up on a 3D warehouse and you can look for GE. Um, or of course, like Mike said, you, the SKP files are also available through their catalogs on their site. So yeah. check those out. And they get it. They make it easier, like easy for designers to access and use the files. So yeah, they, uh, they know what they're doing and the models are beautiful and simple and Perfect. So yeah, take them out for a spin. Like Mike said, they're free. So, all right, well, we're going to call it now. So thank you for hanging out with us and we hope to see you next time on behalf of the entire SketchUp talk crew. I'm Aaron, Matt, and our producer, Aubrey. We thank you for listening and we will see you next time. Take care. This has been a Trimble Media production. Thank you for listening to SketchUp Talk. If you liked what you heard here today and you have an idea for an episode or a guest, you can drop us an email at podcast at sketchup.com. If you have a specific question related to how to do something,